Right, so just to catch a few of you up, the head gasket, head gasket failed on my X300, more to be revealed later on. Uh, the reason why I say that is, this is the old gasket, and really, there's no obvious sign of any failure, which initially greatly concerned me, because why has it failed? The compression was 180 on cylinders 6, 4, 3 and 1. I had 60 on cylinder 5, which made me suspicious, and 110 on cylinder 2. And a long time ago, I dropped a valve on cylinder 2, driving at 70 miles an hour, I think, maybe 71. And she was at maximum revs in second gear. I don't know, fourth gear? One of the gears. Anyway, broke the engine. So uh, maybe they haven't lapped the valves in properly on cylinder two. So I have relapped the valves across the head very lightly. They didn't look too bad, but that's another story. Hopefully then we'll be able to clean up all this junk and get it back on the car. There's my cans all nicely wrapped up in a plastic bag. Uh, I'm not reusing on those, so I wasted my time punching them through a bit of cardboard. And there's the other bits and bobs and some bits in the boot as well. So we can get it back. Oh, more bits inside the car. Anyway, it's a mess is what I'm saying. So hopefully we can put this back together and I won't be able to write my name on the roof anymore. So if you're looking for an instructional video on how to take one of these apart, you'll have to sort of work backwards from the end and come back to the start. So when you get to this point and then you watch it forward again. The other thing is... You can get this manual off uh, the internet uh, called the AJ16 service manual and that's pretty useful for doing this kind of thing. The time has finally come. I've got my head back and that bolt that was stuck has been removed successfully. Obviously since there's been a bit of drilling going on, need to make sure we get any of the swarf out of there, you know, things like that. Any loose bits of metal or dirt, oil. Bits of fluff like that can come out. Oh, a bottle cap, that can come out. That kind of thing. Just make sure that you get all that kind of junk and grease out of the engine and make it all nice and clean for reassembly. Also invest in one of these tripods so I don't have to hold this with my hands all the time, which would be nice. To loosen up some of the more stubborn bits of grime that I've got on there, I'm gonna use some uh, cleaner. It's not vodka, it's just cleaner and uh, my girlfriend's toothbrush. Hope she doesn't find out. I might do a time lapse on this because this will be boring otherwise. So I did actually remove the valves um, just to relap, relap them and just clean them up. Um, only gave them a light lapping, but uh, they, they work the same as any other valves. There's two keepers on there and you use a valve spring compressor and they come out. So there's plenty of videos on that. Now, if I think I understand what Hemi is, then I think this is a, a Hemi because it's a domed head dome shape and the spark plugs right in the middle so it's going to have the perfect burn so it's quite a nice bit of work this head actually went up to the shop to get some uh, more brake cleaner but unfortunately i broke down but thankfully i was in the garage so i was in the right place so it was okay wait for it pss, 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 pss. okay so it's getting to the point where it's almost uh, cleaner than my jokes at work so it's pretty good. Hopefully we'll, uh, oh, a bit more rubbish. Get rid of that. The other thing I've done is I've written down all my torque measurements ready for putting it back together. So first of all, I'm just going to install the cam buckets and the shims. If you do take your engine apart, make sure you keep these in the order they came out in. So on a bit of cardboard, write your notes out. I've slightly lapped my valves in, but they were pretty good. So I only used a very fine, finest paste and did a slight clean up on them. Uh, so I think, hopefully, I'll check them, but hopefully they'll be okay in terms of clearance. Nipped out this morning to get some really important supplies, and after months of waiting, it feels like the head bolts have finally arrived, and I've got some more parts cleaner. Whenever you take anything apart, it's pretty useful to use photographs to be able to remind yourself of how the thing went back together. And in this case, I'm using it to tell me which cam goes in which side. These are both timed up to top dead centre 
and the cam lobes on cylinder one are pointing towards each other so I need to install them the same way again. It's important to keep your bearing caps in order obviously I'm going to clean these uh, first so I'm not going to show you that because it's a bit dull um, but Jaguar have done a very nice thing and they've actually labelled all of the caps with the numbers so it's almost well I think it's impossible to get them in the wrong order pretty much as long as you follow the uh, labelling instructions. So when it comes to your cam it's important to handle this with some care especially if it's uh, going to be out of the engine for a little while don't clean it keep a bit of oil on it and uh, keep it um, lubricated because it is just steel so it will flash rust so uh, make sure you don't spray this with brake cleaner and then leave it there um, if you do clean it spray it with WD-40 every couple of days that's what I've been doing and it seems to be nice and clean still they're also quite brittle so if you drop them they'll probably break that's just basically due to the fact because they're super hard hardened steel now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some oil in each of the cam bearing thingies, whatever you want to call them. I'm just going to apply a little bit of oil into each of these, just a dribble like, you know. Whoa, that's gone in the wrong place. Just a dribble of oil. That's gone in the wrong place as well. But I can distribute it with my finger, so it's going to be okay. Distribute it with my finger. It's just really to make sure that that's nicely lubricated before it will accept the cam. Obviously, it won't go down yet because I haven't got it torqued up. The other thing I should note is I've got this on some blocks of wood now, so obviously when I do bring the cam down, the, the valves will come down, so they need somewhere to go. They need a void where they can go to. Otherwise you may bend your valves, which you don't want to do either. So in turn, I'm just gonna get to my cam bearings and I'm gonna clean them and install them. So obviously I'm gonna start with the E sides. This is labeled E1, so that means it goes here. All the letters on these face the same way and you can't get these the wrong way around because the head bolts have to go through there so there's no way you can get that the wrong way around the other thing i'm going to obviously do is i'm just going to apply a bit of oil to each of the cam lobes so when i do start turning it it will uh, be lubricated you could use assembly grease at this stage but hopefully this engine will be running in 24 hours or less so it's not really beneficial for me to use assembly grease. I don't want to clog up the oil channels with assembly grease. If I was building this head and I knew it wasn't going to be running for a year, then I'd use assembly grease. So I'm just giving these a good clean with some brake cleaner and uh, wiping the bearing face with a little bit of oil just to uh, help it prevent any wear. I don't know what the marks on the top mean. I think they're just something to do with uh, the casting so they know what mould's gone wrong. And as you're going through it, it's important just to check on the inside for any score marks on any of these. These all seem fine, so that's good. I mean, it's amazing considering this engine's got 150,000 on it. How little wear there really seems to be on it. So for the purpose of talking this down, I'm first going to start off with just a normal ratchet and do the most of it most of the way down. And I've bought myself a fancy new ratchet from Halfords. It's brand new, so I know I should be able to get the torques in the correct range. I'm going to cycle this up and down a couple of times first, just to make sure that it's it's good, and then I'll use it to torque down the bolts. These Halfords tools are pretty good, in my opinion. Um, not that I know that much about it, but they seem good to me. So first, I just sort of hand tight them all down to make sure that I don't cross thread anything really. It's always good to just start things off by doing it by hand and then work around the ratchet. And the basic the way I was doing it is when one felt loose, I tightened that one down. And when a different one felt loose, I tightened that one down just to the point where it started to get tight. And I figured that would bring the cam down fairly evenly on the springs if I did it like that. So now I've got this brought down across the whole thing to the point where they're all pretty much touched down. 
uh, I can start to torque all the bolts up here up to the 17 to 23 foot pounds so I'm going to leave it at 20 it sounds like somewhere in between the two and I'm not necessarily expecting it to go click click first time round I'm just again making sure that they're really just nipped up first it's important to work these down relatively slowly and not all at once as I said before because you might snap the can, which would be bad news. So I'm just nipping it down again, just to make sure we're all most of the way there. So we're starting to get some torques now. Now it's just time to repeat for the inlet cam. Ah. There's one thing, one final thing I need to do before the, I can say this head's ready to put back on, and that is to just to check the clearances on the buckets. Now the cam lobes need to be pointing essentially away from the buckets to be able to do this. And to be able to move them, I've put two bolts there, and I'm just gonna adjust it at the end of a socket depending on where I want to put it. And if it's correct, it should be like a tightish fit. So that's pretty much perfect. It's 30 to 36 and 30 feels, it's just gripping just perfect. So that's absolutely spot on. So I'm just gonna complete the rest of those uh, just to make sure they're okay. And if they're good, then I'll be happy. Just had a really odd situation on this uh, cam bucket over here uh, where basically the gap was far too tight couldn't get the feeler gauge in at all and the shim had slightly slipped off the top of the valve uh, spring and was causing it to be uh, basically slightly open all the time so I had to take this cam back out again and reinstall it um, thankfully that's all the problem was and now they're all measuring absolutely perfect that's why it's really important just to check and not just assume that they're going to be the same as they were before. So check and double check to make sure that all of your gaps are correct. Right, so I'm going to leave this overnight now. And because um, I need some help to lift it onto the top of the car. Because it's pretty heavy now it's got the cams in. So I want to keep the dust out of it. What better thing to keep the dust out than uh, the valve cover. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to use that keep the dust out nicely so this leaves me with just a couple of small jobs to do this discoloration here I can't seem to get rid of and it's perfectly smooth to the touch so I'm just going to call it good enough and uh, there's a bit down on this channel I need to remove and I'm just need to make sure the inlet manifold is pretty smooth and clean and the water pump so the thermostat housing is pretty smooth and clean as well so that's just something I'm going to do, I'm just going to clean those up, you just lightly sandpaper it uh, with very fine grit and plenty of WD-40, but this, I can't get this off, and I don't want to go mad on the head, uh, the facing, sorry, the block facing, so just going to clean lightly on the inlet manifold, a couple of little bits like that, and there. Yeah, that's a little bit better, so I'm quite happy with that now. That's all good and ready to go. And one final easily forgotten thing is to make sure that the cams are timed so when we put the head on it doesn't come into contact with cylinders one and six which are up and if the fuel crisis wasn't bad enough the uh we've had the gas lines dug up on the street and now the electricity box has just uh, let go so it's almost like we're living in the uh 1300s dark ages Something like that. You can see the hanging wire that's gone. Scared the living daylights out of me. It's a good idea to make sure you've got your wing well protected because after all this work, now would not be the time to drop a great dent in the top of it. So protect it and it'll give you somewhere to rest it halfway because you've got to lean right into here. It's also a good idea to inspect your head gasket and just make some uh, comparisons, make sure they're the same. 
Um, this one actually looks slightly better quality in some areas, like the holes line up slightly better. So that's pretty good. So I was looking at this um, cover on the back and I thought, hmm, I wonder if this could be the problem. I looked at the gasket and noticed it's got two separate chambers. Anyway, so I pulled it off and, well, yeah, I snapped a bolt. Now, I don't know what this cover's actually for. I don't know if it's some kind of revision, but there's basically no reason for it to be there. Uh, there's water in the bottom half of the chamber and oil sits at the top half of the chamber. Really, it should be just capped off. I can't see any reason for this cover. If anybody knows, please tell me in the comments. But either way, I'm 99% sure this is why I got water in my oil. Uh, it should have a gasket on it, but whoever did the head last, uh, they didn't put a gasket on it. They just put gloop on it, as far as I can tell. It's just some sealant. So that's why it's failed. So although annoyed that I broke the bolt, I'm relieved that I took the cover off because I could have reassembled this head without doing this cover and completely wasted my time, completely wasted a set of head bolts, completely wasted a gasket, because I'm really pretty sure this is the fault all along. It looks pretty bad to me. So this is probably where my coolant went. It probably went from that bottom chamber up into the oil chamber at the top. So this is the end for part one. It might be a few days before I can get this uh, bolt out. I've passed it on to a friend who's uh, really good at getting bolts out. I just seem to make a mess. I try my best, but I just can't seem to get these things out. But uh, this time I haven't tried. I've just basically handed it over to him without mangling the head of it. So hopefully it'll be a little bit easier than the previous one that I gave him. Um, but if you do have what appears to be like uh, water and oil mixing in your engine. Uh, this cover seems like a, a daft thing that it could be. There's absolutely no reason for it to be there. It just If I had welding skills, I'd weld it on. I can't see any reason why it's there. And then it'd be just sorted forever. On the plus side, all the engine internals are really clean now. And I'm ready to put it all back together, put the ancillaries on. And that'll be in the next video. So like and subscribe. And if you're rebuilding or have an X300 and you ever need to do this, hopefully this video might just help you get the job done. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.